Hi, this is Sean with OMU Energy. Today we're gonna to show you how to change the 12 volt battery in your Toyota Prius. This is a third generation Prius. This is actually a plug-in Prius as well, but the process between the plug-in and the non-plug-in is not all that different. So once you see this, you'll, you'll kind of get the same idea and know how to do it in the non-plug-in third generation Prius as well. So we are actually gonna swap it out with an OMU lithium battery, which is much lighter weight, which is pretty cool. Uh, you save like almost 20 pounds of weight in the car, which for a car like this, you're not gonna necessarily feel the weight, but every little bit helps with efficiency. And so that'll, that'll help you a little bit there. Um, it's also a lithium 12 volt, so it's lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which is much longer lasting and more robust and will, will give you much many more years of, of life expectancy than the factory lead acid battery would do uh, the, the, or the AGM lead acid batteries that people buy for these cars. This is gonna be kind of like the best you can get. Uh, this battery also carries a 60 month, 100% uh, replacement warranty for, for the Prius, uh, which is pretty cool. So that, that helps as well. Uh, Anyways, we think this is the best battery to use for your car, but you can use any car, any battery you want, uh, and this procedure is gonna be the same regardless. Uh, to find our battery, you go to www.omu.com, that's O-H-M-M-U, and I'll have the link on the screen during this video, so that'll be easy to find. Thanks. Doing the install on a Prius is really easy. You just need a few tools. I use a power drill, with a attachment for sockets. Makes it really simple. And then you just need to have a 12 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter socket. Those will get you most of the way, but the, the negative terminal is much easier if you have a wrench. You actually won't be able to get that on there. So you'll need a 10 millimeter wrench as well. And a flathead screwdriver to help you loosen the terminal up if it's really clamped down tight on the lead. The terminal itself, if it gets really tightened, can just teeth into the lead, and even if you loosen the bolt, it doesn't come out, and so wiggling it back and forth can get difficult uh, to do. It's easier if you have flathead screwdrivers to loosen up, loosen up the terminal clamp, and then you can slide it off easier. The last tool that you should always have whenever you do these kind of things is a magnet on a wand. Uh, easy to drop a part and spend tons of time trying to get it back. So if you drop a bolt, you drop a, 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 a nut, this will make things much easier. So might as well have it just in case you need it. Hope you don't. That's all the tools you need. Let's do it. First step is gonna be getting access to the 12 volt battery. So it's located right here in the back right corner of your car. You're gonna first get this carpet out of the way. Push that up. Then lift the door panel that's sitting right here. Set that there. Then you actually lift the center piece here, which will fold up, and then you'll be able to lift this plastic tray out of the way. Just like that. Nothing really holding it in place, just a couple of clips that'll easily pull as you pull it upwards. So now you've got the 12 volt battery right here. There's just gonna be three tools that you need to do this. The 10 millimeter wrench, a 12 millimeter, and a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver. And we'll show you how to go through that process. First, with a 10 millimeter socket, you remove this bolt here. It's actually just the nut. Just remove that nut there. Then there's a plastic clip on the top of the positive terminal. We're not gonna touch that yet. We're gonna do the negative first. So get your 10 millimeter wrench over here at the, at the negative panel. To get better access, go ahead and remove this plastic panel here, which just clips off in the front and back and slides down. Then you'll be able to get your wrench in there and loosen that 12 volt lug.
once you've got it loose, you can kind of finish loosening it by hand. Then wiggle the terminal back and forth and lift up. Then this will be detached from the battery. Once that's detached from the battery, you can use this metal ring right here to hold it away. It's the negative lug. So it's okay that it touches ground and that it touches metal on the car. Extra critical, never let that happen with the positive lug. Don't let the positive lug touch metal on the car. Part of that is why we wanna get the negative lug out of the way first, because that one's safer and easier to do that with, while we still have this plastic cover over the battery. So next up, we're gonna take this plastic cover off the top. There's a little push tab here at the top of the battery. Push that away and that will, one, allow, allow that side to lift up. So then pull this plastic and lift up. Then down here, you're gonna need your 12 millimeter wrench. So 12 millimeter socket goes in right here and loosen. Take that one all the way off. Now you can remove the positive side. This is actually a fusible link for the battery to the rest of the vehicle. Tuck that in under the carpet right here. This is a good safe place for it. Now we'll hold it out of the way and make sure that it doesn't touch anything. Now we'll loosen this terminal right here. So you get your wrench out, get it loose, then finish loosening it by hand when you can. Then bring your flathead screwdriver back in. Wedge it here just to get a little bit more space. This terminal tends to be fairly tight. Then you can wiggle it back and forth and lift up. And then that will that'll come right out. The last one is located down here. It's gonna hold the other side of that bracket. So if you put your negative out of the way and then lift this panel up again, Try to get that tucked back so you can see a little better. This bolt is right down here. 10 millimeter. Loosen it up. Then you can lift this bracket up and out. This temperature sensor, you can just leave connected and then tuck your bracket actually back here. Now that you've got the bracket off the top and you've got the two lugs disconnected, unplug the tube on the side of the battery and you can lift it right out. A little bit heavy because it's lead. Now we'll come in with the new battery. Drop it down in there. It'll fit in the same spot. And the you'll want the red terminal, the positive terminal on this side. Once you've got this battery in place, go ahead and get your bracket back up. The second hole will go over the, the bolt. And then the first hole will line up with this hole. Uh, get your bolt back on with a 10 millimeter. Secure that side before you secure the back. Then go ahead and tighten this one. Before we tighten it, slide the battery over as much as you can. It'll just make it easier. Then tighten the back. Just enough so that it squeezes down on the battery and doesn't allow it to slide. Now that you've got this battery in place and it's secured, we're gonna go ahead and connect the positive side. This venting tube isn't gonna have any use anymore. You can just leave it there in case in the future you need it. Take the plastic cover off of that and then bring in this 
piece, which will go right there over the terminal. Hand tighten, and then finish off with the wrench so that it's nice and snug. Over the terminal. You should feel like it's nice and snug and it doesn't wiggle at all back and forth. Once that is in place, now you can bring this cord back over and connect it with a 12 millimeter bolt. Hand tighten it down, then bring your 12 millimeter socket in and connect that. Now this is really important, safety. Positive terminal, negative terminal, it's a battery. They're always live. So as soon as you get it installed and you can, you wanna put a cover on there. So go ahead and get your plastic cover back in place, just like that. And then we can remove the cap for the negative. Once you've got the cap off the negative, you can bring the negative wire in and make the connection. Once you make that connection, the car is back to being powered up. So you might get a little bit of arcing with that final connection. Hold it down and tighten the lug connector. Should be nice and firm and not able to wiggle side to side. Now this battery is all installed and feeling good. Let's go ahead and put things back together. This plastic piece goes right back here, clips into the felt liner. Then lift this back hatch up and get your uh, next piece cover that goes in. Slide that one back down, clips back in place. Then the last piece is your cover. Put that side down and then drop it. Now carpet goes back on and you're done. So all done with the install. You got this big heavy lead monster out of your car and a nice light lithium iron phosphate battery in it. You can take this one to scrap. Uh, O'Reilly's and the other auto parts stores will give you usually five or $10 gift cards for these because they can sell the lead, uh, which, which can get recycled and reused in other batteries. It's a lot of weight. You'll find this battery weighs about 30 pounds a new one about 12 so that part's really cool and again some of the features it lasts a lot longer uh, one of the other neat things actually is the 12 volt system will operate a little higher and if you have amplifiers you like really good sounding music and you have bass uh, the the 12 volt lithium battery will perform a lot better for you so it'll, it'll keep the, the ambient voltage a little higher than the lead acid will which which is nice and uh, and useful and uh, it also charges and discharges more efficiently. So over time, it ends up being a little more efficient system, less waste because you're not using batteries as often and less hassle because you're not doing the swap as often. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.